So guys, I almost died on Sunday after leaving a funeral, no less. Cue title sequence. So like I said, I almost died on Sunday, just like right after leaving a funeral. And why? Because I got into the wrong minibus. So you might be wondering, well, why is that such a fatal decision getting into the wrong minibus? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But before we go into that, I want to let everybody know if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And be sure to like us and share this. Minibuses. Minibuses. If you are from New York, you probably know them as the dollar vans. So of course you already understand why, but for everybody who's out of the metro area who doesn't know that minibuses are the main form of public transport in Guyana. But here's the problem, it's actually a whole set of privately owned buses that transport the public. How did it start? Well, no one's really sure when these things came to be. I mean, it was like sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. We don't know if it just, if somebody just came in here, they dropped from the sky, if they were a gift from the gods themselves, Lord knows. But either way, that they're here. And that is the way that people get around. According to the most recent statistics by the United Minibus Union, over 200,000 of Guyana's 780,000 person population uses these minibuses to and from work every single day. Minibuses, you got two main ones. You got the Pitbull and the RZ, or for you American people, the RZ. But before the RZ, you had what was called the Tata buses. These are these big blue buses. They were the true form of public transportation. I mean, because it was actually owned and regulated by the government. These are supposedly regulated by some entity. No one really knows. But that they are a very practical form of transport for a lot of people. Why I say that is because your average car ride in a taxi is about $500. And I know Damo will put the US equivalent right there on the bottom for everybody, thank you. And, but if you ride a minibus, your average trip is $100. And also have the translation right there for our American viewers, thank you. So you can see, mm, mm, there's a big difference between the two. Anyway, and especially when you're only making about 300 US a month on average, trust me, th this, this option makes a lot more sense. So, but, they're wild style. They're scary. Well, if you don't know which one to get on, I'll tell you my five tips on what to avoid when looking for the right minibus. First rule, avoid new buses. So if they have two colors, if it's a nice new pit bull, and it looks all real nice and sexy, got a big logo on the side, got a design and something. If it has any words on it, any, short boss, big money boss, in God we trust boss, basically any boss, don't ride in it. Don't ride with a boss. Rule two, avoid young drivers. So it basically, if you feel like you could have gone to school with the guy who is currently behind the wheel of this bus, or he could have been one of your children, it depends on how old you are, one of your children's age, or even their children's, don't ride him. That honestly, that should be rule one. So let, let's just go and pop, 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 pop that out to rule one. Rule three, if you can hear the bus before you see the bus, don't ride it. Not only is it going to be an unpleasant experience, but it is it just really is a signal of what you are going to experience. If they are playing cartel, alkaline, or popcon, or literally just any dancehall artist that has made any music after like what, 2002? Don't ride. Rule four, if they have to break any traffic laws to get to you, don't ride them. Rule five, don't ride in an overloaded bus. You may wonder, well, what is an overloaded bus? Well, I can tell you. Well, your average 
Pitbull and our Z bus seats 15 persons. If you find that your mini bus doesn't have any of these five, you're probably going to have a very enjoyable time. You know, the person is going to follow the traffic laws. They're going to play some probably some nice low music and you will get to your destination safely. So for everybody out there, if you're from New York, Tell me a little bit about your dollar van experiences. If you've been to Guyana before, you can even say, how was your whole experience? Or even if you're Guyanese, what do you feel are some of your rules that I might have missed? Well, just let us know in the comments below. And like I said, as always, be sure to like and share, comment, and let everybody know. But anyway, till next episode, everything you do, do it for the culture.